2014 was an interesting year for LG. Just as local rival Samsung shipped a relatively lacklustre flagship in the form of the Galaxy S5, the LG G3 emerged as one of the best all-round Android phones of that year. Not just because of its newfangled QHD display, but mainly because it wasn't really bad at anything. This year though, Samsung has upped its game considerably with the Galaxy S6, and LG needed to do the same. And this is the result of those efforts, the LG G4. Like the G3, the G4 packs a relatively large 5.5 inch display into a phone which feels relatively small. It's ever so slightly larger than its predecessor in all directions, but it feels more like a regular smartphone than a giant phablet like the Note 4 or the Nexus 6. LT told us on previous occasions that it believes 5.5 inches is the sweet spot for phone displays, and there is something about the G4's size that seems just right. From the front, it actually looks a lot like the G Flex 2, LG's flexible bendy phone from earlier in the year. And that's because the G4's display is actually curved as well. Its curve is much more slight though, and obviously it's not fully bendable either. The curved display body and back panel add a little visual flair, while also making the G4 more friendly to hands and pockets than might otherwise have been the case. The front of the phone is dominated by LG's new IPS Quantum display, a Quad HD panel like the previous model, but don't let that catch you out, this screen is infinitely better than the G3's, with bright punchy colours, excellent visibility in daylight and great viewing angles. For the most part, it's every bit as good as Samsung's leading Super AMOLED screens, though its colours are a little on the cool side compared to most LCDs. That brilliant display is framed by something which seems to be a bit of a regression in design terms, a shiny faux chrome plastic trim. It's not horrible, but it stands out in a market where most rivals are now switching to more premium materials. The rear of the G4 is where things really get interesting though. There's a standard plastic back, which is nice enough, the grey version we're using here is a slightly matte finish, a diamond pattern embossed into the plastic itself, and a reflective overlay that gives the impression of more premium materials. Ultimately it is still just plain old plastic though, the G4 you really want is the leather backed version. The leather G4s just look and feel so much classier, even with a slightly polarising stitching running at the centre. It adds a touch of class to what might otherwise have been another unspectacular plastic design from LG. The leather is going to age and wear because, well, it's leather, so it'll be interesting to check back in a few months and see how it's fared. The fact that the back's removable though means that if it does get damaged it's easy to swap out. And that also opens up the possibility of getting plastic at launch and switching out to leather later, as it's unclear how easy it'll be to get the leather option right away. Elsewhere around the back, LG continues its use of rear-mounted buttons for power and volume, something which might seem weird and counterintuitive if you're not used to LG phones, but it actually feels really easy and natural once you get used to it. You can also double tap the volume down key when the phone's off to quickly launch into the camera app, similar to the GS6's quick camera launch feature, although Samsung is a little quicker. Speaking of photography, the g Force camera is a big deal. It's a 16 megapixel unit with 3-axis OIS, LG's laser assisted autofocus, and a new colour spectrum sensor to help with colour balance. That's a lot of camera tech, and the G4 puts it to good use, producing fantastic looking images in just about all the lighting conditions you're likely to come across, with rich, realistic colours. If we're going to nitpick though, we point out that LG tends to favour slightly aggressive sharpening and noise reduction in photos, which can lead to some fine detail being lost. For the most part though, we've been really impressed with the G4's photo and video capabilities. Of course, what everyone wants to know is, is it better than the Galaxy S6's camera? And that's a really tough call to make. In some areas the G4 wins, in others it's the GS6. On balance though, you really can't say one is better overall. They're both really close and really good. LG's camera app still offers simple and auto shooting modes, but the big deal this time around is manual mode. This gives you complete control over just about all aspects of your photos, from white balance to ISO to shutter speed, and there's even a manual focus control as well. And that's all more impressive when paired with the G4's RAW plus JPEG option, which lets more experienced photographers take GNG format RAW images and process these manually in professional software like Photoshop or Lightroom. Most G4 owners will probably never look at RAW mode, but for those of us that want the option, it's a really cool addition. Of course, if you're taking RAW photos, you may well need to use the G4's external storage capabilities. There's 32 gigs built in, and that's expandable through a microSD slot. And in stark contrast to Samsung, the G4's 3000 mAh battery is also removable, though you'll miss out on Qualcomm's quick charge support, and the only wireless charging option right now is LG's own quick circle case. As for battery life itself, we found the G4 comfortably beats the Galaxy S6 with a battery that gets you easily to the end of the day on a single charge. We've been getting around 16 hours per day out of the G4 with mixed use across Wi-Fi and LTE, and around 4 hours of screen on time. That said, you probably won't be getting multiple days out of this thing. 
The GeForce CPU is pretty interesting too, if you follow the ins and outs of smartphone processors. It's the first chip to use Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 808, which is the little brother of the somewhat controversial Snapdragon 810. The 808 has two high-power A57 cores and four low-power A53s, unlike the 810 which has four of each. So on paper the G4 is less powerful than LG's own GFlex 2, but the only place you'll really notice that is benchmarks and perhaps really high-end gaming. Most of the time when things like scrolling speeds and app launch times and touch response matter, the G4 is the faster phone by country mile. A lot of that is due to LG's new and almost entirely lag-free software. LG UX 4.0 builds on the design language of the company's previous software, including more bright and vivid colours to show off the improved display. The new UI also does a much better job of marrying LG's design language with Google's material design. You'll see material style buttons and animations peppered throughout the G4 software, though this definitely feels more like LG's phone than Google's. Everything's very geometric, including menus, tabs and buttons. And there's LG's unique icon style as well, which is highly stylized and a little jarring. Some of LG's apps have grown up a little bit too. Smart Notice, the weather widget that incorporates predictive cards like Google Now, can now show you even more stuff, like apps that might be draining the battery and step count information from the LG Health app. And Smart Bulletin, this slide out panel with its own card based layout, now integrates with the LG Calendar and Quick Remote apps, among others. Neither is really essential though, and it feels like LG's reinventing the wheel a little by giving your phone yet more places to show you cards and notifications. Other software improvements include an HTC Zoe-like video highlights feature in the Gallery app, which can turn collections of photos and videos into moments for you to relive. And the LG Calendar app has grown the ability to tag groups of photos, Facebook events and locations in your calendar entries. Of course this is made a little less useful by the fact that it only works in this one LG app. Like a lot of Android phones, there is some software cruft to be found on the G4, but the overall experience is a big step forward from the previous generation of LG phones. Although LG software may be a little bright and colourful for some, it is flat, clean and undeniably material influenced. So that's the LG G4. Like its predecessor, it's competent across the board. More importantly, it's exceptional where it really matters, with smooth performance, a gorgeous display and one of the best cameras on an Android phone. As much as we may grumble about the lack of wireless charging or quick charge support, or the fact that the leather doesn't come as standard, that's far from a convincing Achilles heel. And what you'll find if you pick up a G4 is a really great high-end smartphone without any real compromises to speak of. For more on the LG G4, check out our full review on AndroidCentral.com.